Hi, this is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer Incorporated in beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina. We are your QuickBooks and accounting experts. And today's video is going to discuss um, a little bit about job costing in the construction industry. And uh, while I'm not going to go into complete detail, I will go into some detail. Um, just to kind of give those who may be struggling with uh, job costing um, some direction and some pointers and ideas. All right. So I've got this fictitious company set up. And if you look right here on the balance sheet, I've got this account called Construction and Process. Now, it is a very common thing that um, you direct all of your expenses when, say, building a house or building a commercial property uh, or a, a dwelling, I should say, um, that you direct all of the cost initially to construction and process. Now, um, the reason for doing this would be more along the lines if you're going for um, loans, uh, say construction loans, banks want to see what your construction and process uh, is, what, you know, how much money you've got invested in that. And then what happens is once, let's say you're building a house, once that house sells, you then do a journal entry to reduce the construction and process for that specific project. And then you move it over to the profit and loss statement to recognize uh, those expenses because you're going to be recognizing the revenue from the sale of the of the property the home and You're also at that time going to be recognizing the expenses now quite honestly you can do this in absolute reverse if you, if you like if it doesn't impact your ability to get loans so for instance you could go ahead and recognize all of your cost of goods, your subcontractors that are providing labor, the materials and other construction costs that you may um, have in play. But then it's going to be imperative that from one year to the next year, um, that at the end of one year, I should say, that you understand what do you still have in process that you should not be recognizing the expenses because from a tax return standpoint that's going to be important the tax return is also going to reflect you know construction and process um, this is also known as work in process so whip um, or construction and process are two terms that you'll hear but in any case um, at the end of a year uh, your cpa will likely want to understand what do you have in process so they can um, reclassify these expenses that you've recognized over to the balance sheet as construction and process All right I hope that makes sense um, so in this case we're going to go with the construction and process method where we show all of the expenses um, coming into this construction and process account and if you look at the um, the items that are used and you know there's quite a few items when you start talking about um, general contracting but you'll notice that under the cost of goods account um, just about everything points to construction and process right so every time you pay uh, for materials or every time you pay a subcontractor you're going to use one of these items and as a result, the, that, um, that expense is going to flow to this balance sheet account called construction and process. Now, let me just show you one. Here's one called countertop materials. And you can see that this box is checked. And it is important that this box be checked in all of your items when you're trying to do job costing. Because, you again, you want to use these items on checks or bills or credit card charges and when you have this box expanded and you you specify the the expense account in this case construction process that's where that expense will flow to 
if I did this, okay, if I had it set up like this, all of my expenses are going to flow to this income account called construction income. And we certainly do not want the, that because this is not income. They're expenses. So it's important that you have this checked. And it's important that you direct those items to construction and process in this video scenario. All right. Um, the reason you see a few counts here that are not directed is because they're parent items uh, of, and, and they don't even get, they never get used. They're organizational items, in other words. So if I were to um, show you this by name, uh, you would see there's site work, but it says parent item do not use. And then under that, we have site work materials and site work arborists and site work cleaning. So cleaning arborist materials, all these are sub accounts of site work. These are the ones that you would use, never the parent item. So I didn't really care if these pointed to construction and process. In fact, having them point to cost of goods allows me to see if they ever accidentally get used because now all of a sudden they'll show up uh, in con uh, under cost of goods sold on a profit and loss. And I would know there's something going on there if I saw that. Um, okay. And so one of the things that we'll often see now is that there'll be an estimate created for a project. Okay. And here's one I created. It, it's just barely skimming the surface of everything, you know, that would be involved. But I just wanted to give you an idea. So you see, I have things like the land or the lot purchase. Um, you know, if you're buying a lot to build, say, a spec home on, and um, and then I have plans and permits. And again, I just have a handful of items here. Okay, notice that I'm not showing any markup here, um, and and that's fine. In in this case, and I am, and in all honesty, I am making this video for a specific client. But my rationale is that there's probably a lot of people that could um, that could learn from this. And so while this is client specific, there's a lot of generalities here as well that would apply. So in this case, uh, all of the uh, all my client really cares about is how much did the home sell for? OK, so you can see that's where I've actually got the, the markup. So they're expecting, and, and this is not a real home, but in this scenario, they're, we're saying the home's going to sell for $250,000. Um, and in this case, we've got $87,200. Yeah, I'll, I'm sure we wish we could make that much money building a house. If that was the case, I would probably become a general contractor. Um, although, um, and anyway, I digress. So again, this uh, these are my expected expenses to build the home, okay? And again, there would be a lot more if we, this is a real scenario. And then this is my expected income from it, okay? Now, as a result of that, I can come over here and I can, um, let's see, let's pull up a report. Job profitability detail report nah let me do reports uh, let me do job estimate versus actuals detail and I'll select this project right here okay so you can see here are my estimated cost okay and here are my actual cost now so far all I have is the land purchase or the lot purchase. Okay, it's lot seven. All right, and um, I don't have any revenue recognized yet. So as you, let's say that, um, you know, you, you start everything. Let's, uh, we'll start with um, building permits. Okay, and um, I don't know what county Pinehurst is in, so I'll just go New Hanover. County, whoever the entity would be, uh, where you could, would get building permits from, and um, let's say that uh, we need to pay seventy-eight hundred dollars 
oops, sorry, for building permits, and we want to associate that with lot seven. Okay, that's what's going to drive cost showing up is when we associate it with lot seven. So if I save that now, you can see now we estimated eight thousand. Our actual cost was seventy-eight hundred. We have a two hundred dollar difference here. So again, every time, not sometimes, every time you have an expense associated with this project, you're going to use an item when you write the check or when you enter the bill. You're going to use post to this items. Okay, you're going to post to items. If you're entering a credit card charge, banking, um, you're going to post to items, right? Now, let me just show you what happens if you fail to do so. Um, let's say that uh, we pay um, our roofing guy, okay? Um, JJ's roofing. Okay, so let's say that uh, this is indeed $7,000, but I instead I post it to $1,300 construction and process, and I post and I associate it with lot 7. Okay, with me so far? So I have not used an item. Instead, I've posted directly to a general ledger account. Well, look what's going to happen. Now all of a sudden we've got this expense, this actual cost, under no item. So that's QuickBooks way of saying, hey, you posted something, but you posted directly to a general ledger account, you didn't use an item. So to, to fix that, I would simply come over here and choose my roofing labor. And I would get rid of this line. Okay, now I have remedied that situation. Okay, the no item disappears. My roofing labor comes up here. Okay, now of course when it's time to sell, you know, you've finished the home, um, you've sold the home, and um, you sell it to, um, to your customer, whoever that is, Mr. and Miss... Joe Smith. Okay, and let's say we sell it today. Then we're going to, um, we have a home sale, and let's say we actually sell it for $262,000. Maybe there was a bidding war on it, okay. Now you can see all of a sudden, um, Okay, interesting. Why didn't that work? Let's go figure that out. I love real demos like this. Home sale. Home sale. Let's do this. Home. It goes to construction income. So that's right. Hmm. Oh. I know why. I know why. I've got to associate it with the job. This was lot seven being sold. Yeah, that'll fix it. Okay, sorry about that. So now you can see we had $12,000 more in revenue than we uh, estimated. This would be a good problem, right? Uh, but there's one more thing that we have to do now that this home has been sold, and that is, is we have to relieve this construction and process account of, um, of its dollar value and, and um, move that over to the profit and loss under um, cost of good. So in order to do that, if I drill down in this account, you can see I'm seeing all kinds of projects in here. So let's start by customizing this report and filtering it to just show us the name for lot seven. 
now we're just looking at